Hello everybody and welcome back to Oxygen Included. Very quick video today just showcasing a very simple trick that I think a lot of people don't know for making liquid hydrogen without access to supercoolant. You do not need supercoolant in order to make liquid hydrogen. Uh, we've been doing this process for a long time, uh, back before liquid hydrogen was even a useful thing to make and we didn't have access to supercoolant. Uh, this is a thing that people did just sort of as a, as a novelty thing. Um, but now that liquid hydrogen is actually relevant in the game, it's a, it's a rocket fuel, um, knowing this trick is something that can be useful in your playthroughs. So, what is the trick? Well, the trick is basically the same pipe mechanic that we discussed in the sour gas condenser build and the liquid oxygen builds, um, just applied to gas pipes. In the case of liquid pipes, uh, we saw that you did not experience pipe breakage due to phase change if you throttle the flow of the pipe to one-tenth of its nominal capacity. So a liquid pipe would normally handle 10 kilograms per second of liquid. If you throttled that using a liquid uh, valve to one kilogram per second, right? So for 10 kilograms, you throttle it down to one kilogram per second. Um, you would not have a pipe breakage and you were able to superheat that liquid uh, to really high values. Um, and then have it, you know, turn into sour gas and condense down and do all sorts of crazy thermal things with it using the, the, the very efficient heat exchanges that you could make with that system. Uh, here we're doing the exact same thing, only with gas pipes. And the gas pipes have a nominal capacity of one kilogram per second, 1,000 grams per second. We're using this gas valve to throttle that flow to 100 grams per second. And then taking this pre-cooled hydrogen, uh, which you would normally get by running that hydrogen through a bunch of thermal regulators, uh, but taking this pre-cooled hydrogen and running it throttled to 100 grams per second through a thermal regulator. Now, if we look at the temperatures here, this is coming in at 245 degrees Celsius. That's correct. This is the uh, temperature at which hydrogen is still a gas. It's coming out at negative 259 degrees Celsius. This is the temperature at which this should be a liquid. But we don't have pipe breakage, although there was a little bit of pipe breakage on saving and uh, loading. So... There's maybe something interesting going on there. Um, but in normal use, right, absent saving and loading, um, this will not break your pipes, right? And we have liquid hydrogen being produced, just kind of starting to accumulate in this big room. Um, a, a, an actual setup for this would have a lot more thermal regulators in order to produce this pre-cooled hydrogen. It would have a gas pipe thermal sensor to detect when the hydrogen was cold enough to send off to this line. And then it would have basically a pre-cooled room that you'd probably cool down with a lot of liquid oxygen, right? Um, that would then be the, the way to house this uh, sort of liquid hydrogen before you sent it into a rocket. So um, the setup would look different, but the very me the basic mechanic is the same. And the reason why I'm even making this into a video, because it sounds like a, a very, very small thing, right? And you might even be thinking, well, why would I even want to make liquid hydrogen with this setup anyways? Why wouldn't I just wait till I add super coolant? What's the rush? There have been a lot of posts on Reddit and on the forums uh, for Oxygen Not Included that are, are very concerned with progression through the space program when you do not have access to gold amalgam. There are going to be some asteroid types that do not have gold on them because they don't have swamp biomes. Um, and a lot of players are worried because normally their progression is that they do steam rockets to get the research for petroleum rockets, and then they run petroleum rockets with oxalite Right? And they, they launch those until they get the research for uh, hydrogen rockets. And they look at things now and they say, well, how am I going to get my oxalite? And I even saw this one post from this, this poor guy. He had gone through all this trouble of setting up a massive puffed ranch to get the oxalite to combine with his petroleum rocket to go and find some, some research and some supercoolant to bring back so he could make liquid hydrogen. And... There, there are so many problems with this. Number one, you don't need to send petroleum rockets up with, with oxalite, with solid oxygen as, your, um, uh, as, as your, your oxidizer. You can use liquid oxygen, right? And the trick to this is that you just send your steam research rocket up again and again and again until you've gotten all the research that you want. Every time you send a rocket with a research module on it to an asteroid, it doesn't matter if you've researched all the stuff with that asteroid, it will come back with at least 10 points of, of data banks, right? 10 data banks will come back per research module. Um, you might not get the bonus 50 that you get for researching something on that destination, but you can have, as I showed off in my Steam Research Rocket build, um, you can have a steam research rocket that that just shuttles back and forth between uh, your 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 asteroid and the closest destination and brings back 90 data banks per go. 
Um, at that rate, you're going to be able to research most of the, the rocket technology very quickly. So, one, you don't need oxalite to launch petroleum rockets. And two, you don't actually need to go and collect supercoolant in order to make liquid hydrogen for fueling your, uh, your liquid hydrogen rockets, right? Um, I would recommend that you go and do that because, you know, why not? Uh, it, it's going to be a lot more efficient, a lot higher throughput system than this, which can only handle 100 grams per second. You're going to need a lot of liquid hydrogen to launch a rocket. This is going to be a fairly slow go at things. Um, but you, you can, I would recommend launching petroleum rockets with liquid oxygen first, and there are plenty of liquid oxygen setups out there that don't need supercoolant, right? You just cool down hydrogen to the point where the oxygen condenses, and then and voila, there you have it. Um, but you don't even need supercoolant to make your liquid hydrogen. So that isn't a blocker either. Um, and I just, I feel really bad for these people. And, and if you're one of my viewers who didn't know about this, then hopefully this will it'll save you from, from having to do this. I feel really bad for that guy who went through all this effort for puffed ranching when he could have just kept on sending steam research rockets up, researched liquid oxygen, gone with that, or just made liquid hydrogen this way and skipped the petroleum rocket stage entirely. Um, but in any case, a helpful tip, trick, uh, method, whatever, for making liquid hydrogen is right here. And again, you don't need oxalite. Uh, you're not stuck in your space program. You can just keep on going straight to liquid oxygen and use that as your oxidizer in your petroleum rockets and go and find supercoolant and other stuff that way. Or you can skip directly over petroleum, go straight to hydrogen rockets using a setup similar to this. Um, these are things available to you. Don't feel like you're trapped in, in doing some really weird thing like puffed ranching in order to get a space program off the ground uh, in one of these asteroid types that doesn't have access to, uh, to swamps and gold amalgam. Um, you can do something like this or you can just you know go with liquid oxygen and petroleum. In any case, hope this is helpful. Hope this avoids my viewers having to go through the same thing that poor guy did. And uh, that's it for this episode. I'll catch you guys next time.